Do you know that each year natural disasters such as the droughts, earthquakes, floods etc. cost the world an unbelievable figure of around $640 billion? This is almost twice the total GDP of Somalia. Now, have you ever thought that from where on the earth does all this money come from? Does it come from a public or a private institution or wealthy individuals? Or is there an organized system that consistently churns out these massive sums of money each year? Well, this is what we are going to find out today. Hi guys, I am Dheeraj and welcome to Wall Street Mojo. And today we are going to take you on a ride of climate finance. So keep your seat belts on. We all know that climate change is a global issue and it takes huge amount of money to mitigate its impact. We also know that not every country can afford these huge amount of money, right? Especially the ones which are developing or the underdeveloped nations. Now this is where climate finance comes into play. So in a broader sense, climate finance generally means that any type of financing that is used to tackle climate change. However, let's suppose if you have to be specific. In that case, climate finance refers to the money that is provided by the developed countries to the developing economies in order to help them fight this problem of climate change, such as that of the greenhouse gas emissions. And at the same time, help them develop and invest in economic friendly technologies and resources such as the wind and the solar power. You can consider it as a weapon that the individuals and the nations use to fight this menace of climate change. So the next question that naturally comes to our mind is where does all the finance come from? So typically the money involved in climate finance comes from the developed countries that use private and public players such as the central banks, big corporations and enterprises to allocate funds. Now a key milestone for climate finance was the Copenhagen Agreement which was reached in 2009. So in this agreement the developed countries pledged an impressive 10 billion dollars per year until 2020 for these developing countries. And the good thing is that all this money was to be used by developing countries to lessen the effect of climate change on their economies. Now you would be thinking what's the point of all this? I mean who benefits from this tons and tons of money? The key idea or the objective behind climate finance is to help developing countries move towards those green energy sources and technologies that have lower carbon emissions. And at the same time, you know, prepare them to financially deal with the adverse impacts of climate changes such as that of the flood or droughts etc. Yes, it's kind of a win-win situation for developing countries. And to support this fact, we have got some numbers for you. In the year of 2015 and 2016, Japan was the largest donor when it came to climate finance, you know, giving around 10.3 billion per year on an average over the two year period. And at the same time, India was a major beneficiary when it came to receiving funds at a whopping you know, 2.6 billion per year. It was followed by Bangladesh, Vietnam, the Philippines and Thailand. And that's not it. In fact, in recent times, the topic of climate finance has taken global importance. Why do I say so? Because you know, according to the data from United Nations Economic Program or the UNEP, Global investments in the field of renewable energy and technologies have soared up a whopping 2.5 trillion between 2010 and 2019. Now guys, you must understand that these trillions of dollars don't suddenly jump out of nowhere. In fact, there's a system in place that helps to churn out huge finances for fighting climate change and developing climate change infrastructure. So what are they? Let's have a look. The first in line are the banks who play a huge role in transferring capital overseas. 
Secondly, we have the financial market such as that of the stock markets and the real estate market that set up the price of the energy commodities. And finally, we have the stock exchanges that serve as a tool for investment in renewable energy companies such as that of Azure Power and Ascent Solar Companies. Now, besides these traditional options that we just discussed, there are certain instruments that too play a vital role in helping climate finance. And these include the following. Green bonds. This is a kind of a debt bond issued by public or private institutions basically for environmental purposes such as that of fighting climate change. Then the next comes is the concessional loans. It's a kind of an easy loan given for carrying out you know, climate control activities and they have a longer repayment period and uh, lesser interest rates. And finally comes the grants and donations to fight climate emergencies. So you see it's a very organized mechanism. And now if for some reason, let's say you still feel that climate finance is just a wastage of money and carries no significant impact, then let me tell you that climate change can have a serious impact on world economics, some of which include the following. The first is decrease in global GDP by 18% if the global temperature raises by 3.2%. Another one is the loss of trillions of dollars from the coastal economies if the global sea level rises. Seems like the world needs a collective help, doesn't it? And that's why guys the role of climate finance becomes all that more crucial. Climate finance provides countries across the world the necessary financial resources to fight the harmful effects of climate change through activities such as you know, purification of pollutants that exist on land, air or water. Uh, another thing is that reducing the use of fossil fuels, also you know, curbing harmful emissions such as that of greenhouse gases. However, as optimistic as it may sound, climate finance is a costly affair. Experts feel that a whooping $100 billion is required each year to fund these climate investments. And it's fair to say that most of the countries cannot afford that luxury. And this means that all this financial burden actually fall on the shoulders of developed countries such as that of the US and Japan. However, even with some of its loopholes, one thing is for sure that climate finance is real and is here to stay. And if you think otherwise, then let's take a real life scenario where climate finance is in action. So guys, you must have heard that developed countries such as North America and Europe have often issued statements that they want developing nations to reduce their dependency on coal based power plants for energy generations, right? Yes, it's a typical godfather like bullying tactics of developed nations. However, Developing countries might argue that these developed countries achieved their own energy generation goals by exploiting coal and other natural resources during their industrialization. And that is where it would be the moral duty of developed countries to help the developing economies invest in more eco-friendly energy sources. Now, this is how you know climate finance works. And I hope you know you get it now this guys you know it's me Thira signing off for today I hope you liked this video and if you did then do hit the subscribe button and vote us thumbs up and let us know what you think about climate finance in the comment section below